Hi, this is Bobby John Bauman from the Ask Bobby John Show. Um, just wanted to mention uh, as I kick things off about the event we have coming up this Thursday, uh, February 22nd, which is the Ohio Valley Youth Network banquet concert that's going to be taking place at First Westminster Presbyterian Church at uh, um, uh, 351 North 4th Street, or I'm sorry, 251 North 4th Street in Steubenville. And uh, so if you'd like to attend, um, please contact me at 608-556-3068. We're already up to 335 people that will be in attendance. We have some of the top uh, youth talent in the Valley that's going to be performing. Frankie Russell from Medicine. Uh, we'll be performing who uh, was in the Valley's Got Talent, as well as uh, Christina Westlake from Toronto. We also have the, um, um, the Mergen girls from JCCS will be performing a duet who won the uh, group competition. Uh, we'll also have a place for dance who won the dance competition at the Valley's Got Talent. The three uh, little girls that uh, did their dance to Mary Did You Know will be back. Uh, also have two of the winners of the Valley's Got Talent performing, uh, Jacqueline Shea uh, from uh, Big Red High School, as well as Elisha Fletcher uh, from Big Red High School will be performing. So uh, would love to have you come out. Also Leah Hunt, who is a senior in high school at Indian Creek Middle School, will be sharing her personal testimony of uh, uh, beating cancer twice. And uh, uh, she's starting a new um, program for children called Leah's Kids. And so she'll be sharing her testimony as well as uh, I'll give a pitch about the new Sycamore Center that we're going to be starting, which is a youth and community center at 301 North 4th Street in Steubenville, a block from the high school that is going to be having after-school programming and uh, evening and weekend programming uh, for, uh, uh, for kids uh, uh, first through 12th grade. And we're going to have a young entrepreneurship program. We're going to have a martial arts class. We're going to have a, a musical instrument uh, um, uh, lessons for free and uh, we're also going to be having uh, Bible study lessons um, and we're starting a drama program we're going to put on the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe uh, coming up in the fall and uh, there's just many many uh, things that are going to be happening so um, if you'd like to find out about that vision that is uh, coming, coming to pass here soon uh, please be there and contact me at 608-556-3068 and that's Thursday um, February 22nd at 235 North 4th Street. I gave the wrong address before. 235 North 4th Street, Steubenville, Ohio at First Westminster Presbyterian Church. We'd love to have you there. Well, um, I'm really, really thrilled today to have Pastor Sam Williams in the house. Uh, I've known him for a number of years. He's been a part of the Ohio Valley Youth Network and has had a tremendous impact in the valley uh, for the Lord. And uh, uh, he's a pastor of uh, Christ the King in Weirton. Uh, and also he uh, works with those who are struggling with uh, drug addiction. And he has just a, a very, very powerful uh, journey that the Lord's taken him down uh, to victory in Christ over drug addiction. And so uh, uh, good to have you here, Sam. I thank you, Pastor. I uh, thank you for this invite. I just thank you for the work that you're doing in the, uh, in the Ohio Valley. And, um, and we're just really blessed to have you with us. So I appreciate you and this opportunity. Oh, no problem. Well, just to kick things off, uh, I've heard this testimony before. I'll never forget the first time I heard it. I mean, I was, uh, I, mean I was on pins and needles. It was one of the most powerful stories I've heard of uh, victory in Christ. Uh, but would you mind uh, sparing, uh, sharing with us today your spiritual journey, uh, your testimony of how the Lord uh, um, worked in your life to bring you to the point where you are now? Okay, of course I would. Well, I... Um my spiritual journey starts with me. Um, I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, my, my mom was a um, brought us up in a Pentecostal background. I mean, we was going to church um, Monday to Monday, and um, you know, I was kind of a little, little rebellious. But in the long run, it kind of helped me out. But at the um, at the age of I would say about 11 or 12 is when I really felt an impression from God. I, you know what I mean? You know, I think everyone gets to that place where they know that they know that they know that, you know, there is a God. And from that point on, you have to make a decision. And for me, I made the wrong decision. You know, that, that time I was about 11, 12. I was, you know, my dad was a uh, alcoholic at the time, you know, and uh, I had dibbled and dabbled with, you know, different types of drugs and, and alcohol at the age of 11. And I just recall one day I was, um, 
I think I was just at home, and the Lord impressed on me, you know, you have to make a decision. I mean, it just scared me. I mean, to the point where I quit doing, I quit smoking weed, I wasn't drinking, because I knew right then. So, I, you know, that it was, it was the Lord. So for about a week, I just, I wouldn't do anything. And so um, very fearful, because we was brought up to fear God. So I was very fearful. But after a week or so, I kind of got back into my old, Old nature, you know what I mean? I always say, Daddy, ring the bell. But if you get too uh, adapted to that bell, then you'll just look over that bell. And so um, my life went on with uh, far as drugs and alcohol at a very young age. You know, I always say people live at the level they're taught. You know, and uh, most people, when they grow up, they want their sons and daughters to be this or that. I grew up in an environment where it was about pimping and hustling and doing drugs. So when I grew up, that's what I wanted to do. And eventually that's what I got into. I'm just trying to make this real short, but from uh, from that point forward, I began to uh, you know do drugs and sell drugs, and eventually I became my best customer. Um, and so um, it began to really take over my life, you know what I mean? Not knowing or realizing or just sticking my head in the sand about it, you know what I mean? I don't know if I was trying to get away from the things that was going on in my house or whatever, you know, um, I think people do drugs, you know what I mean? I think the number one thing is they're searching for love. That's just my opinion about that. But anyway, I um, got into drugs and just smoking, start off just smoking marijuana, drinking, and then from there, um, you know, wanted to try and do different things. And I recall <clears throat> uh, the very first time I, uh, I shot up, um, as a matter of fact, I would take other people to... Um, to pick up their uh, hair on and coke and just call them fools. I said, why would you want to put that in your arm? But a lesson learned was that if you hang around that environment, that environment would change you. And so it was just a matter of time before I stuck my arm out. You know, I turned my head because I couldn't stand needles. So I stuck my arm out and, you know, that's when I began that journey of shooting up. And as time went on, it was alcohol and drugs. And then I realized that I had to pay somebody to, to to shoot the drugs into me, so I learned how to do it myself, which I mean was a terrible mistake. And then I, uh, from there, I just kept doing drugs, selling drugs, and destroying relationships, um, not only with my my family member but with friends, and um, that that went on for years and years and years, to the point where one um, I end up. Um, you know, I don't want, yeah, lazy. I wasn't working, you know, my hustle wasn't going right. So I got off into armed robbery. And, um, you know, and to this day that bothers me, you know, that I can put a gun to someone's head, you know what I mean, at a store mm -hmm. I don't know. And um, But those are things I were into because of, um, uh, because of that habit that I had. Um, long story short, I, you know, I, um, I overdosed four times. You know, you, you would think the first time that um, that would be enough of a witness, but um, it scared me for a minute. I stopped for a minute. Then I got right back into it. I mean, but to repeat that three other times, that, that just shows how, um, what a stronghold that drugs have on a person. So um, the one last time I do remember of overdosing, I was in, a, I won't say the city, I was in a, different place and um, normally what happens when someone overdoses, they take you out the house and just put you to the curve you know what I mean but I just happened to be with a person that uh, just stuck it out with me kind of I know it was God that saved me but it was them also and um, I remember just uh, waking up so sore you know because I, I, I shook so bad but that really kind of kind of shook me up but not only that um, drug t took me to another place, you know, I ended up getting shot four times. Um, I still have one in my neck, two on my back. And, um, but again, it's all the grace of God, you know what I mean, that kept, that kept me going. And um, one day I recall, um, I, I, did, I was in the military. Even there, I, I blew it there. I um, got what they call a chapter. 13 and what that does is they put you out but then it turns into a honorable you know what I mean because of uh, the drug aspect got out um, 
came back to Cleveland, went to uh, uh, end up in here in West Virginia. One of my aunts had passed away, and I end up here. I always loved West Virginia. Hmm. I always did for the simple fact is I can always put my, I felt I can put my guard down. You know, here, if you got in a fight, you just fought. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. in the city, in the city, you know, it was just, it was totally different. So when I came here, I always felt a, uh, a sense of um, rest. So it was back in 1987, I came back here. And, um, you know, st still doing the same silly stuff, you know what I mean? But um, one day I had, um, I met this young lady, which is my wife now. We've been married uh, 28 years now. And uh, that's remarkable within itself. You know, people can barely stay together 28 days now. But, um, you know, so I was kind of, you know, we were both, you know, not doing the right things. And so uh, what I mean by not doing the right thing, the Bible said, you know what I mean, we shouldn't, I don't know who all this, we shouldn't fornicate. I don't want to say the other word. But, but um, um, you know, we were just doing our thing. And then one day my, my cousin, uh, and bless her heart. I hope she don't get upset about me saying her name, but I, I, I just love her. Evangelist uh, King uh, had came to my house with me and, me and my, uh, uh, my, my uh, girlfriend at the time, uh, now my wife, and knocked on the door and, and gave me something that she felt the Lord had put on her heart. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it, it touched me so... You know, because I, you know, I was the type, you know, uh, when you come into my house, you might see a syringe in my arm. I'm, you know, dripping blood or, you know what I mean, whatever. And so for her just to come into that environment was powerful. But anyway, you know, she had said something, but she felt the Lord had told her to tell me. And, and I mean, it just clicked with my spirit. So, and I said, Daddy, well, I call him Daddy, so I'm calling him God. I said, you know what, if you, if you help me get out of this, then I'll serve you. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I was a type, yeah. if I did something, I was all in. Mm -hmm. You know, like with drugs, alcohol, the street life and all that. You know, I was all in. I was 100% serving the devil, basically. And uh, uh, so I said, if I get into this thing with daddy, I'm going in all the way. You know what I mean? And so um, she came, and so we went to a church. So I told my wife, I said, you know what? We got to cut out all this lying we're doing. We got to, you know can't be having sex outside of me I stop all that you know what I mean so mm -hmm. the following week um I went to church and I got saved I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and my wife just blessed her heart she didn't know what she was getting into she said well if you're gonna do it I'm gonna do it hmm. and so from there we got married and um um we just started living for Christ all the way you know what I mean and uh, just trusting and believing him not knowing what we were getting into uh, like I say, my, my mom brought us, brought us up in a Pentecostal background, and it was kind of, you know, I thought, you know, to me, it, w it was just different. And so um, from there, we um, started going to church, started serving the Lord, and, um, and just, you know, just turned our life around from there. It was, it was quite a journey, um, a journey I, I just thank God, because me personally, I had made up in my mind that I wouldn't live past 25. I just didn't, hmm. I couldn't see myself living past 25. And so the, I'm here now and <laughs> thanks be to God. Um, he kept, you know, he's constantly uh, working in us and through us. And so uh, that's kind of just in a short version of, you know, how my life went. But it was the, the thing that, you know, those seeds that my parents, my parent, because really my mom uh, had planted in me that, that kept me and sustained me. You know, a seed, you know, it's always in there. It just needed, needed to sprout, and that's what it did. So, Wow, very, very powerful testimony. Um, could you speak to the question? I think I remember you saying this to me at one point, that when somebody's in the throes of drug addiction, to tell you how bad it is or how um, possessed in a sense uh, they are to to that addiction to the devil or whatever is causing it uh, that if their mom's laying down on the floor and dying if they will take the money out of her pocket when she dies and, and head out and get another hit could you speak I guess to that or okay. um, that just the the, the the stranglehold that it has on people because a lot of people maybe don't know I guess the the extent of the the pull that it has okay you know, I, I, I deal with uh, addicts and alcoholics all the time. And, um, you know, the Bible calls it a stronghold. And, and I'm, well, I'm just going to say it. Um, 
you know, it, it amazes me how people, um, especially people in leadership position, they look at the addict or the alcoholic and just say, just tell them, I don't understand why you just don't quit. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. they never even picked up a joint or never drank the uh, alcohol. And just to tell somebody that, that kind of throws me off. It kind of just kind of gets to me about that. But anyway, I um, that stronghold that I, uh, drugs and alcohol on, it's, it's, it's nothing to play. Most people out there now, if they've been in addiction for a while, it's not about getting high. It's about not hurting hmm. because you know you wake up and you you it's you know it's sort of like the flu 10 times more you know what i mean but once they get that drug in them it kind of gets that monkey off their back and they so they can survive but a uh a addict would do anything i tell most um the parents and all that it's sort of like you know you got to realize that they are an addict you know what i mean and really at that point they are your child but they're not your child you know mm-hmm. what i mean it's sort of like an onion if you peel an onion, you, we all know what an onion make you do. It'll make you cry. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? But you continue to peel. And even if you put it up under cold water, you still continue to peel because there is a core in there. There was, You know, your child is really in there. So you just keep peeling and you keep peeling. And yes, you're going to cry and yes, it's going to hurt. You know what I mean? But I encourage everyone, you know, not to never give up on an on on addict. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, easier said than done just to say just, uh, just to quit. But they're really going through a lot of things, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I'm not making up excuses for them, you know what I mean? At the bottom line, it will have to be their decision, you know, to want to wanna quit, you know what I mean? And I, I believe the only way, <clears throat> excuse me, that a person can really quit is only with the help of Jesus Christ. I mean, because um, I call what I call um, a dry sober. And what that basically is, you're... Um, you're off of drugs, but you're still, uh, you're beating the hell out your wife. You know, you're still cussing and fussing. You're still going through all those things. But when you, when you get delivered from Jesus Christ, you're made whole mm-hmm. spiritually, physically, mentally, financially, socially, emotionally. You know how to treat people. You treat your wife and your children. So I, I would say that, yes, when a, when a person is, is on, on drugs like that, I mean, that's their God. Mm-hmm. And they're going to serve their God. And, and regardless of who it is, grandma, I stole from my, my grandma. You know what I mean? I stole from people around. My wife would tell you, <laughs> she, we laugh at it now. We had an old, one of them old, old clocks that sit by the side of your bed, like when you go in the hotel. Uh-huh. I'm out there trying to sell that. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. you know, like I tell people, an addict will try to sell you a stove door. You know what I mean? Because that's their mentality. That's how they're thinking. Um, and so, um, they're, they're, again, it's a stronghold. You know, we look at it as to say, well, I don't understand why they just don't quit, but it's, it's more than just quitting. You know what I mean? You, you, once you find out, we found out that once you get them off drugs, most of them have mental problems. Then you're dealing with the mental issue. Mm-hmm. And once you try to solve that, now you're dealing with the, the things that hurt them. You know what I mean? Where, you know, we look at these kids now and, and the environments they go into, we don't have a clue. Some of these nine-year-old, ten-year-old uh, children have seen more than most adults has, would ever see, and and you know, and they're programmed to that. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so, uh, for them to to stop hurting, you know what I mean? And uh, they turn to drugs. And, and again, once that drug gets into your system, you know, it it really it takes over you. It, it, it'll make you do things you thought you would never ever do. You see these young ladies walking around and uh, selling their bodies. They're not selling it for money. They're selling for the drugs. Hmm. And so it's it's something that um, and we realize that, you know, it is it's a spirit. But one thing I can say, I want to make sure I say that a a lot of them say it's a it's a disease. And that but it lets me know that Jesus Christ heals every disease. Mm -hmm. So he can heal anybody from drugs who wants to be who wants to be. But it has to be a decision. And I, I. for some, it's easier than others, you know what I mean? And so um, to that person, I would just say, you know what I mean? You know, just don't give up on Christ. I would tell people to pray and talk to them while you're high. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're, shooting up that, when you're shooting up that hair on, you know what I mean, or, or that crack or smoking that crack, still talk with Daddy. Still, because he's the only one gonna really can really help you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I know some people say that 
we know what God is not listening to him. You know, I just, I don't believe that God listens to anybody that calls out his name. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I, you know, I would just encourage them, you know, and any parent or anybody that's dealing with addict, just, just like that onion, just keep peeling till you get to that person. Um, now, how long have you been clean uh, from drugs? So? I've been, um, let's see, when I'm six. I've been clean for about 28 years now. Wow. Yeah. And and with that, I tell people, you know, just because I've been clean like that doesn't mean the uh, enemy doesn't, you know, try to get me back. I, one, just real quick, one instant, I was teaching the Word of God. And just as sure as, you know, I can hear you, you know, the enemy was like, you know what? At the church, you can get you a hit. I mean, he told me where to go, where to get it. You know what I mean? Because you know why? You've been... You've been um, uh, off drugs for all these years so you can handle it now so i tell people he'll try you anyway you know what i mean but yeah i've been clean thanks thanks uh to the glory to god that i've been here uh delivered for like 28 years now wow 20, i've done it for like 20 years but i've been clean i want to say about 25 26 years put it like that somewhere around there well you've kind of touched on this que- next question i'm going to ask but i'll ask it again in a little bit different way um there are probably people that will be listening in that have children that are addicted to drugs. Do you have any words of advice that you could give them um, uh, outside of praying for them? Any other? Uh, I know you had talked about Teen Challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, uh, you had mentioned that in the past, I should say. Right. Uh, any other advice you have? Well, I, I would just say um, be aware that they they're, they are addicts and they have tendencies. I mean, they will steal from you. They will lie. I call them the best actors in the world. <laughs> you know, they they can crown a dime. They can, I mean, they're very, very uh, clever. Um, but I would say to any mom, you know what I mean, um, I really believe in love. Mm. You know what I mean? I believe in telling that person, you know, even though I know that child might have stole from you, might have deceived you, might have put you in a bad situation. But you know what I mean? I always tell them, just tell them every day that you love them. Mm. You love them and you're not going to give up on them. You know what I mean? And you might have to do that long distance. What I mean by that is you might have to, you know, you might be at a position now where um, you might not allow them back in your house. And sometimes you have to do that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I would say, you know, just call them every day. Uh, in fact, I have a sister that, you know, um, that I make sure that, the, you know, that we keep in contact with. Just let her know that we love her. You know what I mean? Because uh, I believe by faith that if we continue to do that and continue and, and they're willing to. Because I believe everybody is, wants to get off drugs. I really believe, you know, but wanting to and do is two different things. But I would tell that parent just to continue to love them. Um, realize that they're, they're going through something. It's just like somebody with, uh, with cancer. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, you wouldn't just kick them to the side. You know what I mean? You would be there to support them, knowing that they're, you know, what they're going through. And so you just um, don't enable them. Just, just, just love them. That's what I would say. Amen. Um, now, if you were a 15-year-old kid, uh, what advice would you give yourself if you could go back in the past and um, tell yourself some advice, whether you'd listen or not? <laughs> but mm-hmm. what, what might you uh, tell yourself to? I guess, kind of steer you on a better path in your younger years? You know, to, to make sure you listen to your parents. You know, but I know in today's society, in some situation, both parents are, are using drugs. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, the Bible says, honor your, your, your mother and father. So you still have to love them. But I would encourage, um, I would say, um, I wish that I would have listened to um, some of the mentors of or uh, people that uh, God had put in my life, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I wish I, when it came to school, you know what I mean? I, I went to school for one reason, I was just to, to, to hustle, to be honest. And mm-hmm. uh, But I, I, I would encourage anyone to, to get your education, get your education. And I would also um, encourage them to get to know Jesus Christ, Amen. you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Really, to really get to know him. Um, and, and, and just a not a religious way, but in a relationship way. You know what I mean? Just talk to him like you would talk to anybody else. And um, and that would be my advice because um, stay in school, get a good education, and never, never, ever compare yourself to anyone else. That's good. Yeah, I would never, never compare yourself because um, I was a type, I wasn't an uh, A student, um, and a lot of, lot of kids out there might not be an A student, even though we as parents want our children to be that. But you just be the best you can be. Be the best you can be. 
Yeah, um, that's that's great advice. A lot of kids struggle with uh, self-image and, you know, always trying to compare themselves to somebody else. And, and there's always somebody better at something yeah. than you are. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. uh, just uh, look to see what gifts God's given you and, and uh, live and move in that, in that. that gifting that God's, God's given you. And, and then you'll find purpose. You know, maybe you're good at music. Somebody else isn't, isn't good at it. Somebody's good at sports and you aren't as good at that. That's all right. You, know, find you said a key word there, purpose. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't realize and recognize their purpose in life. You know what I mean? And so until they get to that point where they understand who Jesus Christ is and uh, get up, get up under that banner, you know what I mean? And, um, and that they'll be, they'll be fine. They'll be Amen. Fine. I, I, I agree 100%. And uh, um, I know in West Virginia, although in Steubenville, um, drug addiction is a big problem. Um, if uh, you were to speak to, let's say, for example, uh, a gang member, uh, there's a number of gangs in Steubenville that are hustling drugs uh, um, and are, uh, I guess, just in a lifestyle that's, uh, if they continue with it, they may not live to age 30. Um, what advice would you have to them, I guess, if you could talk to them? Okay. You know, I, I, the reason I can, because I, I, used, I, I mean, I've done the drive-by shootings, um, like I say, armed robbery, um, strong arm robbery and, and and all those things um and i heard one of my mentors told me say you're fighting for concrete something you'll never own you know hmm. I mean? you'll never own that street you'll never own that block and and most most of the gang members is either about money or, or girls or young ladies should i say and so therefore um but i really believe the bottom line is because the way society is now um most it's a lot of single moms and so to provide for their children and daycare, they have to work two and three jobs. Mm-hmm. So when a child come home, um, um, they don't have no mom there nor dad. So they look for love. And what basically what a gang does is um, allows them to have that, even though it's a disordered love, it's, yeah. it's the love. You know, and that's all they're looking for is love. You know, they basically they're telling them, we'll take care of you. We, your family, we won't let you. And so that draws the, the, the young kids nowadays, you know. And so, um, I, but what I would do is it's just, and it's easier for me to say, um, but if, they, like I said in the, in the other um, comments I made, if they would just, you know, try to stay focused, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, um, on, on, on their uh, future and their destiny, um, they kind of stay on that route. But I, I just really believe that uh, that game type lifestyle uh, and it's, it's nothing to play with, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because sometimes you get into those things and it'll, it'll take you places that you don't want, you know, that you really and truly want, don't want to go. From my understanding, there are some out there who don't even want to be in gangs. I mean, they, they, get, um, um, they, they get a gun so they can protect themselves not to get into a gang. Hmm. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where if you stay in the game, man, you're going to go to penitentiary and that's one place you don't. It looks, you know, it sounds, I don't know, attractive to it for some reason or not. But I've been locked down, and there's nothing with the, you know, what you can imagine. You have to really, it's different. Mm. It's really, it is, it's different. So um, I just would encourage them to um, try to stay focused, um, get around, you know, the Bible says get around wise people, you become wise. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And so um, if your environment is going to change, you get around good people so that they can change. I always tell people, get around people who know more than you, have more than you and smarter than you and you you'll be okay that's good advice Mm -hmm. i I like that um and uh um we just have uh like a minute and a half left here one minute left uh any final thoughts you have that you'd like to share that uh, um, we haven't had a chance to touch on today just here in the last 45 seconds it's basically i would like to say um to the to the parents you know what i mean like you say we have these young kids growing up now I would just tell them, you know, um, for those who are out there trying to make a living for their children, um, just be the best mom or dad you can be, you know what I mean? And I always tell people, never, ever beat yourself up. Never condemn yourself, you know what I mean? Because the way the enemy plays the mind games is, you know, you're never doing them enough or you're doing mm-hmm. too much. Anything you do, I always say the devil will tell you to go in there and rob the bank and while you're in there, call the police on you. <laughs> and so... Um, um, you know, I, I would just would like to say to each parent out there, keep loving up on your child, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, don't compare yourself, you know, to uh, other parents. And 
for that child is is to trust in Jesus. You know what I mean? To go yeah. to Him for anything and everything. He 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 loves you. He's for you and He's against you. And there's nothing you can do to make Him stop loving you. Nothing. Amen. Amen. Well, as the Bible says. Uh, um, uh, love covers over a multitude of sins. And uh, uh, really quickly, just in 15 seconds, could you just share about uh, your church, Christ the King, and uh, meeting time of when you guys meet? And Okay, we're, we're located at 3176 Ware Avenue. We're a place where we believe that you are somebody and you do matter. Everyone is welcome. we biracial. I mean, you know, it's just a time of um, relationship, and we just, you know, we celebrate the Lord. And so... Anyone and everyone is more than welcome to come. Amen, amen. Well, thank you so much for your time, uh, Pastor Sam. Uh, it was a very powerful interview, so I'm really hoping that it'll touch hearts and lives across the country. And um, uh, thank you so much for, for uh, being with us today. Thank you, and Pastor Nate from Marlin Heights. Thank All you, right. guys. You're welcome.